My name is Peter Snell. I do research at UT Southwestern Medical School, where I've been since postdocing there in 1981. Hi, I'm Mickey Snell, Peter's wife, and we've been married for close to 30 years. I was a member of the uh, New Zealand Olympic team in uh, the 1960 Games, which were in Rome. He came to Dallas to do his postdoctorate fellowship. And we, all the runners in Dallas, knew about him because his coach from New Zealand used to come to Dallas every year and do a running camp. In 1962, I broke the world record for the mile, the 800 meters, the 880 yards. I didn't go to the run. I went and did my workout first, and I got my hair combed, and I got all cute. Then in 1964, I was able to, uh, at the Tokyo Olympic Games, to uh, uh, repeat at 800 meters and then also double up uh, by winning the 1500 meters as well. And then I showed up when they came <laughs> <laughs> to, to the work, at, they came running in and we all went to dinner and I was all cute instead of looking like I'd just run eight miles. I suppose one of the things I'm proud of now is that I'm still the New Zealand record holder and Next year it'll be, uh, it'll be 50 years old. So I got real, you know, manipulating and got to sit right next to him during the dinner, which was real helpful. I'm not sure whether to be uh, flattered or disappointed about that. So anyway, and I thought he was very charming, and he called me up a few days later and asked me out on a date. I had to retire because I did an autobiography, and in those days uh, that disqualified you for amateur competition. He is like just a national icon in New Zealand. He's instantly recognized when he hits the airport. When the athletic career is over, uh, the desire to be good and achieve things just doesn't go away. He's got one statue in his hometown where he was born that they put up a life-size statue. And so that led to uh, the big upheaval to come over to the United States, risk uh, uh, everything that I had uh, and the best of my education. The track where he broke the world record for the mile, they put up another one. I was interested in, in uh, adult fitness at that time and there was a good program at uh, UC Davis. 1974 I headed off and enrolled as a freshman. So he actually has two life-size bronze statues. Fortunately in my last year I got invited to uh, ABC Superstars uh, this is the event that uh, O.J. Simpson sort of did well at. And um, uh, my misspent youth, uh, as I like to say it, paid off and uh, I, I did well, made enough money to uh, finance my graduate education. So this same group decided to choose an athlete of the century and he was chosen for that from New Zealand. Well, I got turned on by research and that's what I wanted to do. We have done the sport of orienteering for well over 20 years now. And then I moved into metabolism, working with doctors uh, who are interested in a variety of uh, disease states for which exercise is uh, helpful. Orienteering is very colorful. If you go to a meet, everybody's in their club colors and it's you know quite a spectacle to see everybody gathered at the finish area. As I've been sort of noticing the effects of uh, getting older and, and I've now uh, logically I think want to understand more about how to how to minimize that uh, as much as possible. It's a fascinating sport because you have to be very fit but you have to use your brain so it's kind of a 50-50 deal of mental and physical. It became natural for me to uh, uh, to put these ideas in book form. I, I called it use of the book Use It or Lose It because uh, it was uh, just not applying to, uh, to physical uh, ability but also to mental function as well. And it's a map reading sport and you use, you carry a map and a compass when you go out into the forest to find markers. My belief is uh, that you can't age successfully uh, without exercise. The U.S. Uh, orienteering champions, age group. Age group. Age group for our age bracket. When you get older, when you get into your 70s and, uh, and beyond, uh, it can be, um, it can hurt to exercise and so uh, we need to solve the osteoarthritis problem uh, 
if people are going to continue to exercise. So. My navigation tends to be a little bit better than his and so that equalizes the physical. So as such I became interested in, uh, uh, in prevention, prevention of heart disease, the role of uh, cholesterol and blood pressure. And he likes to act low-key but the nostrils <laughs> will flare and he'll go at it. Not white man can't jump, it's old people can't jump. You you just can't hop over something, you don't have any spring. Just don't say <laughs> anything too bad about us. 